appreciate everyone coming out. We've got a great webinar uh, with uh, Rick Storley from Builder Lead Converter. He's going to talk about how to attract, capture, and convert high-quality digital leads for custom builders and remodelers. So, yeah, really excited to, uh, to to have Rick here today. We've we've got a pretty cool story on how we got connected. But uh, before we get into it, I want to go ahead and uh, just kind of couple couple uh, housekeeping things get out of the way as usual. Want to make sure everyone is aware of our Job Tread Pros Facebook group. It's a great place to connect, network with other Job Tread users. You know, learn best practices, tips, ask questions. You know, our, my my uh, team is in there as well, so we love being able to interact. Uh, with all of you and kind of learn, you know, firsthand about the things that, you know, that you love, the things you're working on, trying to learn. Uh, it's a great place to uh, to, to get connected. And uh, we also put out a lot of updates. So typically you can hear firsthand about all the the, the product updates and things coming out. Uh, so it's a great place to, uh, to hop in if you're not already part of the group. Uh, also wanted to, uh, again, highlight Builder Stories. It's a podcast that, you know, I've been working on for, uh, I guess, a couple months now got some really awesome episodes that have come out recently. You know, if you're not following along and uh, listening to those, you know, you can catch us on, uh, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, or just go to builderstories.com. You know, we'd also love to to know if you've got a story that you'd like to share. You know, you can reach out to us uh, directly on builderstories.com as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely, uh, you know, Bob Turner's, you know, Sweat the Small Stuff episode is awesome. Jason Varney, you know, keep moving forward. He's got a really uh, unique story about how he's built both a dock and deck business and Tennessee Pool and Spa. And he's uh, got his his two sons running those. You know, a lot of great insight there. Aaron Hershaw just, uh, you know, taking down the house with uh, with with his all, all, all of his experience. And then uh, as of, uh, I think it was yesterday, we had uh, uh, Laurel Winkle from uh, She Builds, you know, really great perspective um, that, that we just published uh, a couple of days ago. So definitely check these out. Uh, I'd love to see in the chat, you know, anyone, uh, if, if, if you're listening to Builder Stories and follow along, you know, love to love, love to know it, what your favorite episode is, uh, as well as anything, uh, if, you know, if there's anything you'd love for us to uh, try to try to focus on or uh, find people to, to, to join, to share, you know, their perspective, you know, ha happy to do that as well. All right. Also, one more shout out to, uh, to the Job Tread Connect user conference coming up in January. We're just ramping up. Uh, we've got you know tons of sponsors in place. We're about to put out the full schedule update, so stay tuned for more of that. Uh, again, January seventeenth to the nineteenth. You know we're expecting four to five hundred people to be here this year. Super excited about it. It's going to be a great opportunity for you to not only learn a lot of job tread skills, but also business skills and other professional development, as well as being able to network with other similar type companies. You know, it's just a really great opportunity for everyone to take a couple of days to come together and, uh, you know, just, just learn and grow together. So really hope to see everyone there. Do grab your tickets as soon as you can. It's going to help us with, you know, headcount as well as uh, making sure that the hotel has got enough rooms for us. You know, we've got a room block, but you know, basically we need to, we need to fill that up so that we can take additional rooms and make sure that they don't start selling those to the public. You know, we definitely want to take over the whole hotel. Uh, so to the extent that you can, you know, be sure to get your ticket as soon as possible. That would be very helpful, helpful for us. And we've also got a webinar coming up next week uh, that Anna and I are going to go through kind of everything, Job Tread Connect, what to expect. Uh, so be sure to tune into that as well. So without further ado, I want to introduce uh, Rick here from Builder Lead Converter. He's uh, again got a really great system in place, you know, to help you attract, capture, and convert high quality leads, so builders can pick and choose their clients and their jobs. Uh, we have now added them to the Job Tread Marketplace. You can, you know, learn more about them there. Reach out to him uh, through through the marketplace. But obviously, he's going to share a lot more today about what he can do uh, for you. So, you know, again, really happy to have you on, Rick. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thanks, Zach, very much. Appreciate it. Uh, excited to be here, too, and uh, welcome, everyone. I uh, appreciate you uh, attending here today. I hope that I can uh, deliver. And one more plug for Connect, Eric. I guess I'm going to be there as well, So, uh, and I think I get to actually put on a class. So if you like what you see here, there's going to be more to come uh, at the Connect conference. A um, little background on me. My name is Rick Storley. Uh, I started in the trades. I was a, started as a framer back in the 80s. And uh, worked my way through uh, designing, building new homes, custom homes, and uh, also remodeling projects. Always worked for builders, and I started my own company here in about 2005. Uh, and uh, started out as a coach, and then we moved into really uh, more software development. And since about 2020, we developed Builder Lead Converter. We we 
plug it as your per perfect sales assistant. But what we do is exactly that, attract, capture, and convert high quality leads so builders can pick and choose their clients and jobs. And so I'm going to walk you through um, how we do that today. Uh, I've been talking with a lot of you already from the uh, from the marketplace, which has been great, and uh, you know from all over the country. But a quick story about how we met or how I met Eric. For uh, a lot of years, uh, Builder Trend and Co-Construct, you know, owned the project management uh, uh, software space, and uh, so I would meet with those guys uh, consistently, almost every year at the Builder Show, and saying, "Hey, guys, you know what? We should really build an, an interaction or what we call an API, an open source, so we could push our lead information into your software, and uh, and then they, uh, you know, our clients can seamlessly start an estimate and you know, and sell the job." And it kind of fell on deaf ears over and over again. And so one of my clients here now said, hey, you know what? There's this new software out there called JobTread. And you know, we switched from Builder, uh, from Buildertrend to JobTread. And so I reached out to uh, uh, Eric and talked to him. And we actually did a, a podcast on my show. And I said, Eric, do you have an API where we can actually just push our leads right into your software? He goes, yeah, we do. It's open source. And so like, what, a week or two ago, we actually hooked up our first client. And uh, we, I met with them the other day. They had five leads that they had actually signed into a uh, design agreement. All five of them got pushed into job tread. They're now, you know, at finishing the estimates and going to contract on those leads. And he's like, it's just absolutely seamless. They just literally click of a button and everything goes in there. So it's been really fun to see that. And a lot of our, our clients are excited about it. And you should be too, uh, where it's just one last step for, for you. Uh, but let's jump into it here today and, and, and talk a little bit more um, about uh, attracting, capturing, and converting high-quality leads. Now, this whole presentation is really based on this annual report. I'm going to hold it up right here. It's on the screen as well. The Association of Professional Builders, every single year, they survey about 1,000 builders and remodelers, and they ask them you know, a series of questions. And when it comes to marketing, the number one challenge is generating high-quality leads. And I say high-quality because there's a big difference between generating a lead versus a high quality lead. And that's what we're gonna focus on more here today. Uh, but what you should know right now actually is that the, the survey for 2024 for Association of Professional Builders is open. And if you provide your information, they'll give you a free copy of the report as well. So some of you may be uh, aware of Association of Professional Builders, but if you're not, uh, they do the survey every single year between Canada, US, Australia, and New Zealand. And they take all this information, put it into a beautiful report, and then you get an electronic copy of it, or you can actually buy the print version like you see right here. So this was the number one marketing challenge. I think that's actually increased uh, from when the survey came out for 2023. I think going into 2024 with interest rates above 8%, I'm seeing remodeling, I'm seeing custom homes, and seeing everything slow down across the board. There's a few areas of the country that are probably still doing pretty good, Florida and Texas. Uh, being being two of them. A lot of other markets that were hot, hot, hot have definitely cooled off. Um, so who are the builders that are going to rise up in 2024 and actually take market share? It's the ones that know how to attract, capture, and convert those high quality leads. So let's uh, jump into that and talk, uh, first of all, about a roadmap. Um, when I have a conversation with a builder uh, that the, the typical answer I get when I ask them, where do the leads come from, goes something like this. It says, well, it starts out, well, most of our leads come from referrals. And then we have a mishmash of other sources, like we get a few from our website, maybe we get some sign calls. We tried some ads, but they weren't successful. And so we stopped them or paused them because we really don't know what we're doing. Or we hired some company that said they were going to give us a bunch of leads and they were all crap leads. Uh, and so that's just the kind of the standard uh, conversation that I that I have with Builder. And, and the, the common theme is they know there's a problem, but they really don't know how to fix it. So and after I learn more about their business, the issues that I uncover are typically these. Uh, number one, we have a lack of a roadmap. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what a, is in a roadmap uh, right now. But a, a roadmap is simply a conversion plan. In other words, once you get an opportunity uh, for a custom home or say a remodeling lead in front of you, do you have a roadmap or a conversion plan to bring that lead to an appointment where then you can finish qualifying them and decide if you wanna pursue that lead or if you're going to say next. Um, and so this is what a, uh, a roadmap would contain. First of all, it has, uh, it has an offer. So in other words, what is your offer? And just saying that 
hey, are you interested in building a home or remodeling a home? That's not a good enough offer. Uh, because what happens then is you only get the cream on the top, but you don't get everything else below that, that whole segment of leads that are actually trying to find a custom home builder and remodeler. And I have stories I can tell you, I've been doing this a long time, of clients that have sold leads after three, four, five plus years. They've been following that particular client. Um, so you got to come up with a compelling offer to take that lead to take the first step and actually start that relationship with you. We'll talk more about that going forward. The second thing is a, second thing is a follow-up plan. Um, you have to have a specific plan of how you're going to follow up with that. And then the third one is what I would call an if-then plan. An if-then plan is simply, if the lead does this, then I will do this. Or if the lead does not do this, then I will do this. So it's just understanding what path they're taking and then being able to follow up appropriately. And then the uh, the last part of the plan would be database management. So database management is all about managing leads who engage versus who do not engage, managing sold clients uh, or customers, work in process, managing past customers, and then a combination, a management plan is going to be a combination of the salesperson and automation. Most of the things in a, in a roadmap or a conversion plan here can be automated, which is really important you understand this because you're thinking, I don't have any more time in the day. I don't have enough staff to do this. The, the good news is you don't have to. And actually, once you put a, a roadmap in place or a lead conversion plan in place, it will take time off of your off of your calendar right now where you can focus on getting in front of more leads, face-to-face, -face, phone conversations, working on the business versus spending so much time working in the business. Um, so we're going to take a look today at some of the unique challenges um, that you have. But the first thing you know we need to look at is asking the question is, do you have a roadmap? If you don't have a roadmap, this is where you want to, to start. All right. I'm curious, if you wouldn't mind putting in a chat box, um, are you a home builder, say custom home builder, or are you a remodeler? Um, if you're a home builder, would you just type one? And if you're a remodeler, would you type two? I'm just curious to see, you know, what we've got here. It looks like a decent mix. Okay, three, that's fine for both. Yeah, so it looks like maybe a few more remodelers versus home builders. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, what we're going to talk about here is really based on design build. And there's some unique challenges for design build versus what I would call a specialty remodeler. So that would be somebody that's maybe focusing on smaller, more single tasks such as window siding, doors, roofing uh, versus a production home builder that's building off of a plan. Maybe they're building a lot of spec homes, that sort of thing. Um, there's some unique challenges there. And so these unique challenges um, really come from, uh, again, having product to show versus not show. So that's number one challenge. The, ne the next challenge you're going to run into is the sales process. Obviously, how do you sell design? which is essentially what you have to do in order to create an estimate in order to sell the job. Um, so that's a huge challenge, whereas a, obviously a production builder, especially for model, they don't have that. So the sales cycle is much shorter. It's much more of an immediate, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's an immediate call to action or immediate um, uh, position to take for a a potential home buyer or remodeling buyer uh, because it's a it's a it's a project and get my arms around. OK, I know what my roof's going to cost. Let's pick a shingle. All, let's go versus actually designing and building an addition to my home or perhaps a, a very luxury custom home. So we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to look at first and foremost, your website content, because you don't really build product that people can see, such as a model home or a spec home your website really becomes your number one source of leads. So if it's not your number one source of leads right now, I'm going to tell you how to do that. Uh, and after this uh, uh, webinar is done, you're going to be able to jump right in and make some uh, immediate up updates. Um, also, how you capture leads is quite different because if I'm a production builder, I can capture a lead just based on having a home for sale. Somebody needs a home for sale, it's built, hey, come, come buy it. Uh, if I'm a specialty remodeler, obviously a storm comes through. I got to get my roof fixed or my siding fixed, uh, so on and so forth. So it's an easier uh, sale. But website content actually becomes your 24-7 showroom. It is your model home. 
Um, it is your everything. So from a marketing budgeting standpoint, your website should be on top because really that is your primary tool you're going to use to attract that high quality lead. And that's where we'll start here. Then we'll move on to lead capture and then we're going to end up with lead conversion. So this is not three separate things. These are really all go together. Uh, and the conversion process obviously, obviously is what I'm talking about is going from a lead from a, a website or even a lead that calls in and leaves a message or it sends an email um, to a phone appointment. So that's what we're talking about from a conversion standpoint, getting them into where you can have a conversation with them, you can qualify them in roughly three to five minutes, you'll know, hey, I wanna pursue this, this is a viable uh, lead, or I'm gonna say no, next, and move on to the next one. And really that's the goal here, is to be able to generate more opportunities than you can handle. So you can either create a backlog for yourself, you know, talking to a client today and he's at eight months backlog right now, he wants to get back to 12 months. You know, I'm talking to a lot of other builders and they're like, they have like a one month backlog. They're, they're starting to get a little nervous. So you wanna be able to create a backlog um, or you wanna be able to say, you know what, I wanna start building larger homes or larger projects. And so I'm gonna start saying no to these smaller projects because now I have opportunities to build larger projects. So what, however that looks to you, um, we just want to give you as many opportunities as possible uh, to say no, so you can say yes to the right opportunities. All right, so attracting high quality leads, why are they so elusive? You know, to generate a lead right now, it's really not that hard, okay? You can go on Thumbtack, you can go on Angie's List, you can go Facebook lead ads, you can generate a whole lot of uh, leads out there, but they're all such low quality and they're typically for very small projects and they're typically very price sensitive and they're usually very um uh, how do, what's the best word for it uh elusive i think that, but i have on the screen here but you know they're they they talk to you one day then they ghost you the next they're just very very poor quality so the question i usually get asked is well okay rick how do i get more high quality ads uh should i just start running ads is there some magical platform out there where I can sign up and get ads and get high quality leads? Or is it social media? Should I be posting more content or less content? Or should I be on Instagram versus Facebook? Or or maybe it's Pinterest, you know, or is there something else that, I, that, I, that I'm missing? And so let, let me give you an analogy here, which I think is, is, is really important, um, is that if you've ever hired an employee, there's two types of people that you can attract or go after. So most of the time when you're new to hiring somebody, you're thinking, you know what, I want to get someone with experience because that way I don't have to train them and I can get them right in and up and running and they're going to make a huge impact immediately. And so you go out and you look for that person that's got this experience, you hire them. And then after about three months, you realize that, man, this person's got a lot of bad habits. They got a lot of baggage they brought with them. So now you are tasked with untraining them from those bad habits. And now you've got to retrain them to the way you want things done. Now, once you hire a few employees and maybe you learn that way, now you, you look at it a little bit differently. Now you're looking at, I want to get, I want to hire someone that has the right skill set, has the right attitude, and then I can coach them and train them with my in-house program and get them up and running. And now I've got a loyal employee that I can you know, raise up in my organization. So think of high quality leads as the same way, is that a high quality lead is developed over time. It's not something that falls in your lap right away. It's developed over time. And the reason is because this is design build. So the design process takes a long time. People take a long time to decide that they want to do a renovation. They take a long time to decide they want to build a custom home. It doesn't happen overnight. So what we're really looking for is we're looking to get to these people early before they're ready to talk to you. Because you're always going to have a certain percentage that are willing to pick up the phone and call you. They're willing to fill out a form on your website. And they're willing just to stay, start a conversation immediately. But there's a much greater percentage that are in the marketplace. They're on your website right now. And they're coming and leaving without ever starting a relationship with you because they're not ready to talk. So that's the type of people we're going after. Because those people, if we can get to them first, we can establish value for your services. We can get them to trust you. By the time you have that phone call with them, all you're doing is confirming that trust and value. And they're saying, great, what's the next step? You know, and you got them. And that's and that's the what we're going to talk a little bit about next is is you know what this uh, looks like from not only a, a capturing standpoint but also a conversion uh, standpoint. So there is no magic formula out there or no magic you know platform to run ads. Uh, most I, I always tell my builders look, run ads last. Do that last because it's the highest cost 
and it's the lowest conversion. So what you want to do is you want to uh, employ a practice called inbound marketing. We'll talk more about that next. All right, so we talked about the employee and here's where I see the big disconnect between builders and and uh, I would say their, their leads. So builders are very process oriented. And so what that, what that means is they think uh, from a process standpoint, that's what my customer is buying because I have to follow this very specific process in order to get them the remodeling project they're after or the, perhaps the custom home that they're after. And if I don't follow that process, it's going to be a disaster. And so that's what they're buying. And so builders are very hyper-focused on that. And let's face it, you guys have to really, you, you work years at developing this process in order to deliver just the, the perfect product at the end, you know, that great new home or that great renovation project. The lead doesn't think that way. The lead that thinks about product, price, and place. So let me break this down a little bit more. The first question your lead has is, what will my project look like? The second question that they have is, how much will it cost? And the third question they have is, where can I build my new home or do you remodel in my area? That's the only three things that they are thinking about. And the last thing they're thinking about is your process. So if you want to attract high quality leads, you have to make your website filled with high resolution, clean and clearly articulate information on uh, uh, following items. You wanna focus on design ideas and floor plans. Okay, so design ideas from the standpoint of this would be high resolution images and or videos of projects you've completed. Floor plans are very, are, are very, very important. And by the way, I've had this conversation so many times with custom, custom builders. A lot of custom builders will come to me and say, Rick, we don't ever build the same home twice. So I don't want to put my floor plans on my custom designs on my website because I'm afraid that somebody will steal them and my competitor will build them. And my, an my standard answer is, that's fine, but keep in mind, you're going to lose a lot more business from people that don't understand the, your, the ability that you have from a custom home standpoint, design standpoint, than you will ever lose from somebody trying to steal your plan and build it with somebody else. So yes, custom home builders, you have to have floor plans on your website. And then usually the question is, oh, well, why, Rick? What, why? Why do I have to do that? Why can't I sell on my process? Because they can't visualize what the home will look like. And they don't care about you or your process yet because they don't know if you can build something that they're interested in. So floor plans and your architectural motif and showing a wide variety of that are so imperative to actually providing context to that prospective client of what you are capable of. And if they don't see that, they're going to discount you. And remember, when people are on your website, they're not trying to include you in their list. They're trying to cross you off the list. Very important you understand that. They, they, they don't want to talk to 10 builders. They want to talk to maybe two or three. So they want to try to cross you off the list. And that's, that's how people shop online. So you start with design ideas and floor plans. Then you have to provide pricing tools and examples. Well, Rick, I'm a custom builder. We don't have plans to go, yeah, I know. You still have to give them a budget range. And you know what the important thing for you to understand too is this, is that if you don't give them a price range on your floor plan, you're going to attract a whole lot of people that maybe are going to, their budget's going to be below what you can even offer both on the remodeling side and the new home side. So you have to give these examples of what some of the projects cost, uh, as well as pricing tools. And we'll show you some examples of those next. Okay, locations and service area is number three. Uh, I, I see this all the time too. You know, obviously we are local for a reason, and we have a service area, a defined area where we're going to build and remodel our homes. A lot of websites, the builders just never put anything on there. They just assume people know. And so the person lands on there and like, they can't figure out if this builder serves their, their territory and they leave. So you have to get very, very specific on that. And you have to show them, yes, we do build in these areas. Yes, we do serve this area for remodeling. So there's no question in their head whatsoever. So this is a lead centric website, which is going to, the content will focus on answering these questions, these questions, a builder centric website typically focuses on their process or their awards and that sort of thing. Now, should you have your process and your awards on your website? Sure. Yes, absolutely. In fact, the websites we designed today, we include those things, but we make sure that they are well tucked away. 
what we make sure that people can find right away is the answer to these three questions. Because if they can't find the answers to these three questions in 19 seconds, and that's how long you have is 19 seconds, they're going to leave. So when they, boom, they land on your website, you better be able to ready to answer those questions. They better not have to dig for this information. And if they see crappy photos, no floor plans, they can't figure out where you build, they're gone. You've lost them forever. All right, so here is an example of a home builder. And this home builder, as far as, um, this will be a floor plan section. So we created what's called an index page, put the floor plans on here. Now, most of our clients don't have floor plans and you should have 10 to 15 floor plans on, on your website. So we have an independent designers design library with about 4,500 plans on it that's broken down by area of the country. So you can actually pull plans from designers in your state and your area of the country and put them on your plan. We have a license for all that. They include photos too. So it doesn't matter if you built the home or not, you've got to give them some example. Um, so again, this is the, the idea here. This is where people are going to spend the time on your, on, on your site. So that's from a design standpoint from a home builder. From a remodeler, you're going to have a service page. Oops, I think, uh, there we go, I gotta go. Here we go, from a remodeler, you're gonna have a services page. So uh, in this case, this, this client is doing kitchens, additions, bathrooms, and basements. Again, I wanna get them to the type of project they're considering, and I wanna make sure I give them as many options within that project as I can. So obviously kitchens have different motifs, you have different architectural styles you're doing, you're doing with things. You can want to showcase your best, uh, your best projects on here. And high resolution photos are key, guys. Don't take pictures with your iPhone, even though they do great photos. Hire a professional photographer. You'll get your return on that investment a hundredfold. Uh, this is an example like home packages. Okay, so you need to have three. Now, if you're a home builder, you say, well, uh, we don't build spec homes. I don't have things priced out. That's fine. Give people a range. So in this case, you see this builder is showing a range from 1.5 to about $2.8 million homes. And so if you click through on any of these, you'll see a sample floor plan. Uh, you don't get into specs or anything like that. But all I'm trying to do is convey confidence to the lead that, yes, we do build in your price point. And at the same time, I'm going to disqualify people whose budget is less than, uh, I guess in this case, it's $1.1 million. So if my budget is 800,000, I say, oh, you start at 1.1 million. Next, I'm gone. So I'm not going to plug up your, your pipeline and waste your, and waste your time. Oh, I think we lost the, there we go. Are we back? Okay, thank you, Taylor. All right, moving on. So next thing is pricing. So this is an example of a pricing tool that we built, uh, some software where a person can go through a lead for a home builder can go through and they can pick the type of plan that you offer. They can go through and they can pick a different plan. They can leave you notes. They can pick plan options or things they're considering, the location, any location options they need. Do they own their own lot? That That's sort of thing. And then they can go here to get pricing. They'll actually book a call with one of our clients. And then that client will actually take a couple of days, look at the scope of work that was produced for them. And they'll have a phone call with that person. They'll say, hey, your home's going to range between 1.5 and 2. Does that fit into your price range? Yes or no? If yes, okay, what's the next step? They move them into their sales pipeline. If it doesn't, no, they go on to they go on to the next one. But literally three to five minutes, you know if you're going to uh, be able to work for that, that prospective client or not. And the beautiful thing is here is that it's not just a cold phone call. You actually have a scope of work. And people love this thing. I mean, I'm talking about they love it because they get excited to talk to you because guess what? You They just put together their dream home. Uh, you know, in, in six steps. So very, very powerful tool that uh, it's an interactive tool that people love to use. All right, so this is an example for a remodeler. So I can go through here, I can pick a remodeling project, I can scroll through different projects that you've done. This is the Miranda residence from this client here. Oh, I love that particular, you know, color scheme. I love what you did, the skylights. Great, I wanna, you know, price out a kitchen similar to that. Then go through here, again, book a call, get a budget from their their build from that builder. That builder can quickly determine, yes, I'm going to move you forward into our, do a site visit in this case. And uh, here's the next steps in the in the process. This is location. So this is very something very specific with location. So you need to make sure you have a map. 
You need to make sure you have pin drops and you have specific cities within those areas that you serve. You can create maps too that have borders around them. If you want to go by county, if you want to go by uh, a municipality, whatever it takes, but there should be absolutely clear of where your service area is. And if you have land uh, uh, options to, to have land in those areas, you need to, uh, be uh, showcasing those as well. So if you have communities here. Now, one thing I recommend if you do have access to lots is don't give them too many specifics on it. Just say you have home packages from in this particular area, unless you're actually selling lots too, but home packages from in this particular community, give them just enough information to get them excited, but not enough where they can they get all the information and they don't need to talk to you. All right, so when we move into when we move into what does your home page look like this is an example of something that i would recommend this is one of our client sites we just launched a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago i guess is that i land on the page i want to make sure i can get my questions answered in 19 seconds or they're gone so you see here right on top of this and this is the app uh, this is a scrolling masthead as well so what that means is when i scroll down the page those links right there are gonna stay with me. And you notice everything else is tucked away in a hamburger menu. It's very clean. We're gonna have more call to actions right before this. We wanna get those people to the information that they're after. So design library is gonna be floor plans, home packages, just that. Those are my homes that are give a price range. My photo gallery, again, I can divide, I can put galleries together by room. If I'm a modeler, I can do it for a custom home builder as well. I can do it by project or I could just create a, a general gallery. And then obviously where we build. So I'm gonna answer all these questions, all three questions right away, as soon as they land on that homepage, they one click and they're where they're at. And that's what we look for is one click to, to connect. And you see very nice, beautiful, high resolution image here. And uh, you know we're off, we're off to the races. So that's uh, essentially the content that you need to attract those high quality leads. And the, the beautiful thing, guys, is that it also is going to disqualify those low quality leads, those leads that are not a good fit for you. Uh, so again, more, and it's all about confidence too. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but I've got to create confidence that you can build in my type of project in my price point. And I had this conversation, I think, earlier today with another with another uh, uh, client I was talking to. And I said, you know, if you're showing one of your prospective clients a million and a half dollar home and their budget's two, the question in the back of their mind is always, well, can you build a two million dollar home? I said, but if you're showing them a two million dollar home and their budget is one and a half million dollar homes, they automatically assume you can build a one and a half million dollar home because you're showing them a two million dollar home. So your website is no different. The projects on your website should really be higher than maybe what your normal project is. You're not going to only show higher projects, but you want to be able to sell down because confidence is established when people see you can do a nicer project. That means they, they realize that, hey, you could do my project too, even though we're not going to go quite as fancy or luxurious as that. All right, let's switch gears a little bit and let's go on to hopefully here. There we go. Let's go into capturing high quality leads. Um, so we've attracted them now. The information, again, built a lead centric site is answers those three questions. What can I build? Where can I build? How much? What will turn them off is your process, your awards about you. Don't be, have a builder centric site, have a lead centric site. Okay, so now we want to capture those. So this is all about creating a compelling reason to get them to opt in. Now, the, your lead's favorite radio station is WIIFM. Anybody know what that means, WIIFM? You heard that before? WIIFM stands for What's In It For Me. What's In It For Me? Thank you, Kelsey. Congratulations, you get the prize. Yeah, What's In It For Me? So it's your lead's favorite radio station. And the, the mistake that I see a lot of builders make is that they are getting before they give. So what I mean by that is, is that they'll have their phone number on the website and they'll have a form. That's it. So in other words, they're asking for something, they're getting before they give anything in return. 
So it's not really a fair relationship. And as far as your leads are concerned, they're saying, hey, I'm not getting anything out of this. I'm not going to call. I'm not going to fill out this form. I'm just going to keep looking until I find what I'm looking for. So if you are only getting, you are losing leads. We call those opportunity leaks. So you have people on your website every single day that are leaving, never starting a relationship with you. So about 2%, builder's typical conversion rate is about 2% of unique visitors. So if you have 100 visitors on your website, you'll get about two leads. And they'll either call you or they'll fill out that form. The typical time on site for a home builder or a remodeler is about 30 seconds. Now, it's very difficult to capture a lead in 30 seconds. And, and yeah, Matt, good question. We're getting to that. <laughs> Matt says, what do we need to give them? Yeah, it's coming. Uh, so about 30 seconds is the, is the time on site uh, that people typically take. It's very difficult to capture, which is why the conversion rates are so low. You're going to have a certain, like I said, the cream of the crop leads will come to your website. They'll, they're willing to fill out a form. They're willing to pick up the phone and call you. The vast majority are not. That's why your, your conversions are lower. Your capture rate is low. Now, let's talk a little bit more about what is your goal. So your goal is to give them something of value. So there's the answer to your question, Matt. Give them something of value. Uh, and you want to go ahead and try, give them something of value, keep them on the site longer. So I equate this to, say, working a showroom or working a model home. I, I started my career selling. I worked out of model homes. I learned something really quick. The longer I could keep that lead in the model home, the better my chances were of capturing them as a lead and booking an appointment with them. If they came and went really quickly, yeah, it was, I mean, I would, I, nothing I can do. Same thing working in a showroom. If you've ever done a retail showroom, the longer they're there, the higher the percentage of capturing them. So you want to keep on your site about a minute and 30 seconds um, and anything more than that. And it's, it's golden. You want to build confidence. So important that you understand confidence. Confidence comes in a number of forms, and I don't have time to get into them here today, but if you have more questions on this, ask me about this. But confidence is going to give somebody the uh, the little extra push that they need to actually up, opt in. So we call that a permission-based opt-in relationship. In other words, they're looking for a builder. You give them something of value. They're confident enough where they want to take the next step with you, which is to fill out a form and hit submit. Essentially, what they're doing is just saying, I would like this, whatever you're going to give me of something of value. And in exchange for that, I will give you my contact information and I will hit submit, giving you permission to follow up with me. That's how the relationship starts. Now, what we can get is we take that 2% conversion rate, we will get 3 to 8% plus conversion rates just by using this technique here. We give before we, before we get. Here's what's so, so important. I need you guys to understand this is a lead will stop looking when they find a local resource that answers their questions. They're done. They, they will opt in. They will listen to you. They will let you follow up with them. They're done because they found, they got their questions answered. And if they're looking like, say they're going to build in North Carolina as an example, say they're finding information in different States, they'll keep looking. But as soon as they find a builder in North Carolina, that will show them what they can build, how much it costs, and where they can build it, and it fits into where they're looking, they stop. So that's what the goal is here, is to give them everything they're looking for and stop. So there's a, something out there we call lead magnets. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but what is a, a, a lead magnet? So a lead magnet is an interactive, compelling offer. And this offer is something that they value. So Matt, going back to your question, it's like, yeah, something interactive on your website, it's compelling, and it's an offer that I really can't say no to because what do I have to lose? Nothing. Okay, so what should lead magnets revolve around? Design, pricing, location. Sound familiar, right? I'm, I'm, it's the same three questions they're coming with. So the content I have on my website attracts them there. Now, when I want to capture them, I'm going to continue to use that same three content, but I'm going to dangle a carrot in front of them. And the technique that I'm going to use is called the control release of information. And what this means is I will give them just enough to be interested in me, but not too much where they don't have to take the next step. So what is the next step? I need them to fill out a form and give me permission to follow up with them. So that's called an inbound permission-based relationship. What they're saying is you have something of value that I want. I'm willing to do this. Let's start the dance. And as soon as they hit submit, the dance begins.
So let's look at some different ideas here. So this is a design remodeling lead magnet. So this is an idea book. Again, people can't, they can't picture what their renovation will look like. They don't know what are the hot colors right now. They're not sure what products are good. Architecturally, they're really not sure what motif they want, you know, for the remodeling project. So this is something here where we say, hey, you know what? We will send you this interactive design flip book, digital flip book. You can see what's hottest in, in custom home and, and design build renovations uh, just by filling out this information and click the send me the idea book button. Okay, instant gratification. And so that's what, what will start the process there. Home building. You know, you put five to 15 floor plans on your website, but oh, but guess how, have I got an offer for you? You can search our enhanced design library and I'll give you access to over 4,000 plans. Count me in. I'm done. Design is always your number one lead magnet. More people are after design than anything else. So we always start with and focus on design. Okay, the next thing for remodeling, pricing. So this is an example of a, a client's uh, remodeling section for me. So I'm in a whole house remodeling and they're showing some of their whole house remodeling projects. And now I have my call to action button. Hey, get instant pricing here on your remodeling project. And it looks just like what I showed you before on the uh, attraction section. So again, I get they want to know how much. I'm gonna give them the ability to figure that out right now and they get to scope out their project. Well, the beautiful thing for you is, is that you have a call, you've already got the project scope. So it's like, you know, really quickly. And I have one client that tells me, he goes, Rick, before I even have the call with them, I know if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do this job or not. I already know it before even, even talking to them. So you get that such great information. This is an example on pricing for home building. So now I'm looking at floor plans. I give them, you see right there, request pricing on this home. So, oh, I like this floor plan. How much does it cost? Okay, click a button, start filling out the information, start personalizing that or adding things that you want to have in your home. So when you have a call with them, you can give them a fairly accurate budget because you've got a preliminary scope of work. Location, I'm a home builder. Let's say I have access to some land or maybe you own some land or you, you develop your own land. Okay, so here I can put together a lot report. Now, this particular example here, you know, I have custom builders. They never owned a single lot, but they knew they had access to land in different parts of their service area. So they would just put together a very generic report that showed that they knew about lots in this area and that people always had to schedule a call in order to get more information on that, on that land. So that, again, they would run interference there. So I'm not giving them everything. I'm giving them just enough to have them take the next step. So of course, now once I get the lot report and I see, oh, you have land where I want to build, What's the next step? Oh, I need to call you. Okay, let's set up a time to call and then we'll we'll have that conversation. All right, so some more options to schedule, uh, more options here. You can schedule a call. So I have just a general idea. This works great for high value projects, people that are gonna spend lots and lots of money uh, and uh, they're very, very busy and they have a book schedule. They can go ahead and they can pick an exact time when they know that they have a free, uh, free opening in their schedule when you know that you will call them. Um, schedule a tour. You know, I do this with like all of our clients, even though they're all their floor plans, even the ones they don't have built or they don't build the specs whatsoever. Let's put schedule a tour on there. And then when someone schedules a tour to say, well, we don't have that one readily available. However, I'm sure we could probably find something similar if it looks like it's a good fit for us to work together. So it gets it's a conversation starter. Uh, a chat, a website chat to text. Hey, I have a quick, quick question on a project. Okay, fill out your information here. I will get back to you in a text messaging. And we'll talk a little bit more about how important text messaging here is on the conversion. Um, so that moves us into the final part of our webinar here today, which is converting high quality leads. Uh, very, very, uh, it's difficult to do, uh, but if you follow the, what I'm gonna tell you right now, we see roughly 40% of all of our leads captured can converted into appointments, about 40%. The more leads you have, that might drop down to 30%. And if you're getting less leads each particular month, that might be as high as 50%. So 40% is the average. So what is the goal here? Yep, we wanna convert 40%. Normally takes about four days. Uh, that's about the average is, is four days. Can take years, as I mentioned before. We've had leads that have converted after multiple years in a uh, in a nurturing program. Now, texting or in using mobile, somebody's phone because it's always attached to their hip. By far the best tool to use for converting converting leads. Yeah, phone calls still work. 
email can work. Uh, there's other messaging out there, you know, obviously Facebook, uh, Instagram, Google, my business chat, that sort of thing. But texting is best. But what we will start is right on the website. We will get some leads that as soon as they hit submit, we'll give them the offer right there. Hey, do you want to book a call right now? Talk about your project, pull up a calendar, let them book a call. And so we will get a certain percentage of those that, that will go right away. Um, here's what you need to know. Timing. After somebody opts in, your follow-up needs to vary based on the time of the day. Now, should you follow up with somebody that opts in at two in the morning? Yes, but it's going to vary. Okay, so will I send them an email at two in the morning? Yes. Will I send them a text message at two in the morning? Yeah, I will. You might be thinking, Rick, you're crazy. No, I will send them a text message, but I will disclose I'm an after hour service. And then I ask them, would you like to book a call and talk to you know so-and-so for later on this week? So yes, I will, because that person might, you know, whatever, they got insomnia, they might, they're working a, a, a night shift, whatever it might be. But yes, you do follow up, but it does vary based on the time of the day. Now, the, the follow-up is a combination of text, phone, and email. I'm never going to use only one platform. I'm going to use all three platforms. I also will use Google My Business Chat, which by the way, that's something you should write down. If you have a Google My Business profile, Go back and check to see if you have chat enabled uh, because now people can actually just send you a chat message right through Google My Business Profile. You can put the app on your phone if you want and you can start chatting with people that way. A lot of people will call you from your Google My Business Profile. Facebook or Instagram, they can message me um, through that as well. Something we call a VM, that's a voicemail drop. We'll actually drop a pre-recorded voicemail right in somebody's phone so it looks like they missed a call. And you know what the funny thing is? They don't even listen to the voicemail. They just hit call and they call our client back. Oh, hello. Yeah. And so they get them on the on, on the phone that way. Um, so it's something you should be doing. Now, here's what you all seem to know. Email performs the worst. Absolutely. Hands down the worst form of communication today. The reason is because it's so difficult to get an email delivered today. There's so many spam filters. You don't have any control over that. You can get blacklisted your IP address. You don't even know it. It's the worst. So do we still use it? Yes, but we're gonna we're gonna focus first on text messaging. That's our primary. Phone calls will be our secondary, and emails will be our, our third means of follow up. All right, so let's jump into final thoughts here, and then I guess we'll have a Q and A. If anybody has some, uh, please start typing them in right now. Uh, so. How do you attract, capture, and convert uh, high-quality leads? I hope you got some ideas here. I want to I wanna give you just some, I guess, words of wisdom, things that I've seen over time. Okay, number one, stay away from ads. Ads are your last resort to driving more opportunities. They should not be your first. You want to plug your opportunity leaks first, which is you, you already have opportunities you're missing. So start with those. Then go to search engine optimization so you're, you're attracting inbound uh, people, inbound people looking for your services in your area. Um, ads are last. And there's specific ads that I would work with. Some I, I would not, but uh, we can get into that if you have, if you have a question. Uh, number two, again, you're going after those organic inbound leads. Organic just means that when, when someone's searching for your services in your location, it's the, the results that show up below the sponsored results. So people skip right through the sponsored results and they go to those organic inbound um, uh, listings. Because guess what? Google is, is very similar to getting a referral. If you show up on page one of Google for your services in that location, it's very much like your neighbor telling your client, hey, you know what? I worked with ABC Builders. You should check them out. They're awesome. They can do your project for you. Okay, rebuild your website every two years. It's like a, think of a, a model home. You'd never have a model home around more than two years because guess what? Styles change, designs change. Every two years, your website should be should be rebuilt. Uh, and make sure it's updated regularly. You should never have old stuff on your website. Uh, a good question here, Shane. I'll answer that in a second here. But uh, make sure you never have old things on your website. Make sure your best foot is always put forward on your website. So if you got old photos on there, if they're low resolution photos, get rid of them. Uh, and get high resolution uh, photos on there. Online reviews are gold. So Google My Business is where you start because the more reviews you get on there, that's gonna help with your search engine optimization. And it also builds confidence in future uh, future leads. 
because they're going to go and look at your Google My Business profile. They're going to check out your reviews there. Uh, every review, by the way, on Google My Business profile should be responded to. So if it's negative or positive, you should be responding to it. Don't keep testimonials on one page. I see this all the time. You got all these wonderful testimonials. You put them on one page. Guess what? Look at your Google Analytics. None of your leads go to that page. They don't look at them. So you move your testimonials and put them on the pages that are most viewed, like your floor plans, like your services page, like your photo gallery, like your locations page and your available homes page. Invest in SEO. If you're going to have a marketing item, invest in SEO. Again, because that inbound lead that's looking for you, they're much higher quality and much higher conversions than any paid ad you can do. All right, automate everything. You do not have to do things manually anymore. You can automate absolutely everything. And you can build logic into this. And yes, there is AI. You, you, I mean, it's it's amazing what can be done today. You can simply focus on speaking with leads and determining, yes, I want to work with you. No, I don't want to work with you. And build out your pipeline, backlog your business, raise your margins, raise your average sales price or go after bigger projects as you want or grow your business, however you want to do it but you have to automate these things. And you, the human element is, will kill you. And, and we'll talk about that here next, is that you are not being compared to your builder competitor. You know why? Because your builder competitor is horrible at follow-up. Horrible. As an industry, we are just notoriously bad when people inquire for us, which is blows my mind when people are going to drop hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, we're horrible. But what they're comparing you to is their favorite place to do business. And I put Amazon on here. Why is Amazon so successful? Because the process is consistent. People know what they're going to get. So what happens is when, when you have everything automated, you take the human element out of it, you can, you can replicate and duplicate your process at will 24-7, and you don't ever lift a finger. Follow-up sets the tone. This is the other most, most important thing to notice is that somebody – calls in and leaves you a message or they send you an email, if it takes you a week to get back to them, it sets the tone where people automatically are thinking like, well, I guess my I'm not my, I'm not that important, you know, where it takes you that long to get back to them. Whereas if you automate everything, that follow-up happens, you you could be in a three-hour meeting and that fo- they would get followed up with in a minute with a text message, even better. So that you engage people right away. The idea is, is that if you follow up right away, not only does it set the tone, but if they're still on your website, they're emotionally at their peak. And that's the best time to actually convert them into um, a, an appointment. Don't be afraid to be opt out. I get this a lot too. It's like people are like, oh, I don't want someone to unsubscribe or just say stop. It's like, no, you do want that because you need to find out who is not going to build just as much as you are as who is going to build. So it's okay when people opt out. Some people are just, I'm just curious what stuff costs. You know, I'll see that in my clients all the time. They'll opt in to do a price request. Oh, I just want to know what it costs. Okay, then they opt out. Fine, that, that's all right. Because the majority of people won't opt out and you'll be able to sell them eventually. You have to measure everything. Absolutely measure everything. Measure where your leads are coming from. Measure your conversion rates. Measure your uh, opportunities to, to leads and your leads to uh, appointments. Everything has to be measured. What are the best lead sources for you? Split test. I mean, all these things have to be have to be done. And finally, do what your competitors won't do. It's really, really important. A lot of your competitors are sitting on their hands. They don't know what to do right now because the market's slowing down. Do what they won't do or perhaps can't do. You know, get an edge on them. And this is when market share is taken. It's when markets slow down because some people will sharpen, the, you know, sharpen the iron and others will just hope for the market to get better. And so this is when you can pivot and actually make a huge difference in the future of your company. So I guess I'll put it up to questions here. I think there were a couple. Uh, let's see. So Matt, what do we need to give them? I think I, I answer that. Um, what if you're a company that does not have a gallery of photos? Yeah, good question. We do provide photos of projects for our uh, clients, Sean. So whether it's from our design library, sometimes we'll even use um, uh, just uh, Shutterstock photos as well uh, on, on their website, just to show some nice high quality, high resolution uh, images. Uh, again, the whole thing is about you don't have to have built everything on your website. You just want to convey confidence so somebody feels like you can do that. And obviously, you can build those nicer projects. Do you have a platform that manages follow-up funnels, et cetera, or is that on, uh, on our end? No, we do. That's all part of what we do. That's the 
capturing conversion rate. Uh, and it also converts into a CRM uh, as well. So all the tools that I showed you today, the websites, as well as the follow-up on the back end, all of that's in one platform. So it's like a one-stop shop for you. Man, that was awesome, Rick. So much great, uh, great information. I yeah, really, really appreciate that. I uh, certainly... Uh, I'm going to go check to make sure we've got the uh, the, the Google My Business chat enabled. Uh, sounds like something that would uh, be super easy to, to 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 get going, and you know all that all that feedback about the website and, and one of the things that you're offering all of the uh, the the job tread customers uh, right is uh, did, you want to talk about that just for a second? Yeah. So again, the the it's called the API integration. Uh, so when we set up our clients, we build them a sales pipeline. We set up a spot in the pipeline. So when that client gets to that spot, and it's usually when they put together, put together on some sort of payment. So whether it's for design or whether it's for to build an initial scope of work or perhaps an estimate, when our clients move the contact, it's just a drag and drop feature into that stage in their pipeline. All that information from that client gets pushed into job trend. So then they open up their job trend account and now they start the estimate. It's seamless. Uh, so um, that's something that I've been trying to get through Builder Trend for years. They would never do it, always ignore me. They still don't have it, which they, to me just blows my mind away. <laughs> uh, Chris, you, you asked the question, well, we need to manage that as well. Or are we only working in job trend? I uh, need to manage that as well. Oh, yeah. So the booking campaigns, we manage everything. The only thing our clients do is that when somebody asks a question about location or project type, something that's not related to an appointment, our clients will jump in and they'll reply to that question. They might get into a phone call as well, and then they can just turn off the automation. Uh, so but otherwise, if they don't, they just go right into an appointment. The first time our clients will actually interact with that lead is when they have the phone call. Awesome. Yeah. And if people uh, reach out to you on the, the job trade marketplace here, it looks like you're uh, you're also offering a uh, like a free website content audit valued at a thousand dollars and a one, uh, a one hour, uh, recorded strategy session. So seems like a great opportunity. Uh, you know, clearly you've, you've got a lot of experience kind of looking at, you know, what, you know, leads to higher conversions and, uh, you know, just really appreciate you offering that up to our customers to help them make sure that they've got, you know, an optimized website and can, uh, can, can convert the, the best leads possible. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, happy to do it. I've had some great conversations already, Eric, with a, a lot of job tread, uh, uh, clients and, and really good questions out there and people that really want to make some improvements in their company. And, and, uh, you know, we're happy to be a, a resource for you and whether you partner with us or not, you know, we want you to walk away from that strategy session with some good ideas. Awesome. All right. Well, we will uh, go ahead and uh, wrap it up here. And uh, again, appreciate everyone taking, uh, taking the time to, uh, to, to, to come listen to, uh, to Rick and learn a little bit more about what they do. If, if you know, if you do have any additional questions, uh, you know, please do reach out through the uh, through, through the job trade marketplace. Rick will uh, get get right back to you. And uh, yeah, appreciate you uh, coming in and attending. Thanks, everyone.